Right, so that's our first um, proper class. Uh, we will be discussing usability and UI, and we had three papers to read. Um, so we first uh, proceed with the uh, presentation by Shell, and then we will have some discussion afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Hello, students. Lecture. So, what I will do is that I recognize some of your faces from the class we had before uh, with uh, Amalia on human factors and usability in interaction design. But I will recap some of the slides, some of the terms, and for those of you who did not attend, try to bring you up in the same scene of music so we know what we talk about when we talk about usability and user experience. I will only talk about mobile device and I will leave the variable to someone else to amuse us later. So what I what I did, I um, I took I read all the papers but I like one of them better than the others. So the one I dived into what was the one Prepared for an ACM uh, Chai, is it Chai Kai. Kai. Yeah. Kai conference uh, in Paris uh, one and a half years ago. It's called uh, Swipe versus Scroll. Okay. Yeah, so I will start just give you some other terms and then I will also. I could not, I just had to do it. It was attempted to relate this to some traditional models as well. And then we're gonna take a look at specific development for mobile devices, so, some, uh, some things you have to get aware about, and then um, go in detail into the paper. So one of the papers, the swipe up versus scroll. Okay. So first the term usability. Three things you have to remember what it is. So it's about effectiveness. That means what does it do? And how much does it take to do what it's supposed to do? And how well do you like it or how much do you dislike it? Sometimes it's much more easy to find what is annoying you with a mobile phone, uh, application or other applications as well. And um, user experience is the other one when you put some more um, factors into this one and talk about use, utility, learnability, and memorability. Also, how easy is it to learn and how easy is it to remember what you learn or, or to use it later on? So that's the, um, the characteristics or uh, about usability. Next. need to engage you as well. And as I said, what is the most annoying thing you experience when you're using your phone, using an app on a phone? Some of you. What is the worst thing? Uh, the worst thing is uh, when it locks connection without telling you and so people can't talk to you. <laughs> and, and you don't know this. <laughs> and then the dropping connection is, is something I Really hate it on the phone. Okay. That's on the phone, yeah. <laughs> Some more app related? Um, if you have a phone for, uh, let's say, Android and it's designed with the guidelines of iOS, for instance, or the other way around, okay. used to something and they switch it on the platform. And how, how, how does that appear to you? How, how can you see that? Um, for not trained you, people. In iOS, you use a tab bar at the bottom, for instance, ah. in the app. And uh, Android, you might have the action bar at the top. And then if they do something else, um, other platforms. Okay. Yes. Fucking up the convention. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Mix, <laughs> mixing up the convention. <laughs> yep. Conventions. Yeah. Conventions are important because you expect to find something somewhere, and, you, and if you find it, it's annoying. Of course, it is. Something else? When you are using uh, portrait mode and suddenly it changes to landscape because you are. <laughs> Slightly, you want to Yeah, I agree. You go around the corner in a bus. <laughs> 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 you go around the corner in a bus. Always, always some. 
What's this work? Yeah, I agree. I, I hate when I go to click on something and the web page updates and it jumps down one and I click the one above. So as I'm going to click it, it yeah. changes. Oh, yeah. So anytime an app does that where it brings up a menu bar, like I And it takes time. And mm. it takes time and it moves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it moves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. That's often happens with web apps with the browser too. Yeah. Something else. Some 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 other experiences. Fronter is really good at that. One line machine keeps going down. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it goes to sleep, it wakes up and thinks you did the wrong orientation, mm -hmm. and I have to flip it. Take okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, when something is too big or too small, for instance, the bu button is size? too small. Yeah. Yeah. Size mismatch. Yeah. So you have to use like, uh, a stylus pen or something. To actually yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And also, uh, to me, also, the battery, uh, every time, I, if, well, my phone is now, I don't know, it's maybe one and a half years old or something like that. And now, well, I just have to switch off. A lot of things all the time, so I can save the battery for a day. Um, when I play a game or something, and it yeah, suddenly I uh, an ad is there, and you press uh, add to the set, so you're going to try to download them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So in but what is it called in that buy? And it's like one second delay or something, so you press the add instead, and then you go to replay. Yep. Yeah, I think they make it on purpose. Sometimes you have the ads just right to the controls, like to the buttons which you have to use, and you inadvertently have to click the ads sometimes. Um, it's very annoying, yes. I agree. <laughs> when I stick my, my big phone in one hand mode, which allows the keyboard to pop out and come down the bottom, but the OK buttons appear in the middle of the screen, which it's really hard for me to get my yeah. thumb to yeah, I I saw, use my nose, you know. <laughs> I saw in a book they said the sign for one time one eye or one eyeball. Yeah. So <laughs> don't do stuff like this. I mean, the signing for keep it simple. And we're gonna see later in the presentation, keep it simple is the thing for this one. Go for next, please. That's why I couldn't uh, I just wanted to present this for you. This is from the uh, total quality management old model from a Japanese called Kanu or Kanu. It's just very easy to relate this to apps as well. Because this is what you expect, this is what you want. This is, you just take it for granted, this must be there. So this is, if it's not there, you're gonna be very disappointed. And this is what you also need to present. And then you have more the vow factor it doesn't have to be expensive or something like that, but it's something you do not expect. So if you got something you don't expect, it's very good. <laughs> a good feeling of, of this one. So when you're trying to, um, when you are developing an app or a service or whatever, bear this in mind that you should have one of those attractions in there as well. So it's, it's very easy to compare this to, uh, to what you want to pay for something. Okay. Thanks. More back to the user experience again and uh, the usability part of it. So in short, the principle of designing the user experience when it comes to mobile device is nothing different to designing for other devices. What you need to know is what kind of users do you develop for? I guess we will go to that. Yeah. Uh, what, are the, what are the users? Where are they doing this? What are they doing and when they do it? Uh, and stuff like that. So what is specific about the mobile environment is normally users do this to kill time when you are in a line or a queue waiting for something or when you commute sitting on a bus, you know, you see people everywhere, have put it, they're just praying up the phone and do stuff when they're doing something else. 
and something also in the stress, uh, maybe your car is break down on the on the road and you need to call for uh, some emergency or something like that. So, so that's some of the specific situations when it comes to developing more mobile devices. Next, please. And even more specific activities you normally do using a, a phone is uh, using the camera, like I do a lot of time looking at Bloomberg, just taking a picture of this one uh, and I use it later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's connects to the next one. I'm saving those items for later use. And of course, a lot of people are checking and updating status on social networks all the time. Next. So remember, design for distraction. So make it quick and easy to complete key tasks, not put the uh, OK button in the middle if you have it in the, expect to get it in the, in the bottom right. And um, allow for easy sharing and saving. But remember, design for distraction. What is uh, the commonality is for mobile usage is it's very often in a short burst and when you are distracted. And uh, that is also bringing you over to the, uh, the paper, which is about how can you simplify the task of moving between web pages in a browser on a mobile device. So <clears throat> just to give you the context of this paper, it, I believe this is probably one of the biggest conferences in uh, the human factor or human computer interaction uh, area. Mm -hmm. As you can see, more than 2,000 attendees from more than 50 countries uh, in this one in Paris in 2013. The paper, 392. So this is one of almost 400 papers, but it was almost 2,000 submissions. So there's a lot of that didn't make it through the uh, process of being approved. And you can see it was uh, reviewed between 4 to 7, so an average 4.55 peer reviews on this paper. So you see some people. So it's been through a process. And also in addition, the final version was checked by the associate chair of, of the, uh, the technical program. So just to give you some uh, Back on that one. And then, next, more about the, uh, the particular paper. So it, it uh, I would say, dates back, because I, when I saw this one, I, <laughs> I didn't even recognize or remember that, we, that, that that was a problem, because I'm not so used to have tabs in a browser. <laughs> but of course, before you didn't have tabs, so you have a lot, a lot of windows open. <laughs> it switched between windows, not inside. A browser, but inside uh, the windows of browser, you can tap between. And then you transfer this one down to those smaller screens. And of course, the tab between tabs inside a window isn't that, isn't that easy with fat fingers and small screens. So then they came up with some solutions to solve this. And one of them is, of course, the one from the iPhone, and you have to swipe. And you see a little bit of both sides of the next one, but you see the main one here. And the other one is from uh, Android, where you have more um, a stacked layer of cortex, where you can see more than one page, so you can select, they believe, easier. So that is the back one for this one, the paper. So we go to next. So the research question in here is, as you can see, it would be faster and the best mistake to use horizontal swiping gesture used in Safari or what you call page based sw uh, switching or vertical scrolling gesture used in Chrome, which is called stacked card based switching. And I made two hypotheses uh, out of this one. H1 is would it be quicker to switch using, let's say, Android compared to Apple. And uh, the second one would have been more uh, mistakes because it's uh, smaller, uh, 
it's easier to pick the one. They believed at that time it was easier to pick the wrong one when you have more to pick from. So that is the two things they're trying to um, accept or disapprove with the experiment they had. Okay. So the first part of the paper, of course, describing the method they used. The experimental design, two by three, within subject design, and balanced with like Latin square. Someone had a course last fall about methods with Fulda. I can tell us what this is about. So what is two times, three times? Okay, I can help you. This is telling you how many, this is, re this is referring to the independent variables. So two means here we have web page switching interfaces. You have either pages as an iPhone or cards as an Android. Let's give you the two. The three is the number of web pages they use this one, either four, eight, or 16. So then you have a two, two by three design. Within subject, between, that means you have no control groups. So they are controlling them. Um, they are, okay, there is no control group applied in this experimental design. And what they try to do when they balance this one using Latin square is to avoid uh, the learning process of learning uh, which one is coming next when you click it. So they are uh, switching the order of, of the pages coming up. Okay, and the dependent variables they measure is the response time and the number of erroneous selection or selections. As you can see from this one, the participants, they used 14 and it was um, at the age here, 21 to 34, average to 28. And uh, of them was six Safari users and 10 Chrome, that makes 16, but because of two of them, used both. So four, which is only Apple and uh, yeah. Uh, and recruited via hallway intercepts. So you, you, know, you can see this one. They work somewhere, went out in the hallway, picked some and say, can you, can you join in? I have experimented it. I guess that's called convenience sampling. <laughs> Pick those one who is easily available for you to do. So. Of course, that um, um, let's give a bias that this might not be representative for the rest of the world. Yep. What they did instead of using the browsers, which is inside uh, iPhone or Android, they made a a simple application to simulate this one. So this is what it looks like when you have a full screen thing and uh, this is the page, this is symbolizing the page and this symbolizes the next page. This was just to start the experiment. So then this is the simulation of the uh, iPhone and this from the Android. You can see it's the same, you see the previous one, you see the, let's say the next, then you see the one in the middle and then you see where you are, the numbers of dots here and you, um, and on the other side, you can see you have four available, so that's, that's the Android card stack thing. All right. And then directly to the results, which is first the selection time. So you can see in the beginning there is no um, difference from from here to here is used, or from here to here is used. It's not the same big difference between here. So it doesn't really kick in before it's got 16 pages or more than eight pages open in a browser. And I don't know, probably, in, I don't think that's a normal way of, for most people to, to use this one. I, I guess people are closing uh, pages, web pages when they're using. How many tabs do you guys have open when you're browsing? Five. Okay, five. more than five? More than 10? More than 15? On a mobile device? More than 20? <laughs> and you still have <laughs> everything on the computer? More, more than 30? Yeah, on a phone? More than 30? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about 33, I think, is my max. Oh, okay. I guess.
guess that's it. A lot of memory too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get up to around 30 yeah, I, I have about, you know, five, six standard things which I read and I keep them open all the time and then sometimes you keep yeah. browsing out of the so, so article. You can, so, so you can benefit of using a card <laughs> instead of having this, this yeah. growing thing. Yeah. What is, uh, this is, um, okay, statistically it was, uh, this is um, it's good results. So, so it's shown a significant, significant if effect and... Um, I'm not an expert on this one, but I used something called an F. Uh, um, well, the, the way they did the an analysis using this F thing, and as long as you have this probability to be very low, you, you know this is a good number for this one. That's why they could accept the first hypothesis and said it is faster using a card deck versus scrolling. Sideways. And for the next one, which is about the the error rate, they don't have significantly uh, data to say anything about it, so it was not confirmed. So there is no uh, no no uh, result from this uh, paper saying that if you're making more mistake with one or the other. No one interfaces. Yeah. So, in addition to to measure this, one, you can go to the next. One. They also took a look at the uh, to to bring this closer to the uh, interaction design again, the cognitive load, and uh, what I call the likability. How much do you like this one? And uh, yeah, uh, they they concluded that's a margin marginally significant F effect between the pages and cards interface for eight or 60 map pages. Where participants perceive the pages interface as more frustrating than the card interface. Um, I don't, I believe that's, I believe that's relates to what you used to. So if you can see seven out of 14 like the cards better than the pages and four out of 14, which are all the iPhone users, of course, they liked the way they did it because it was familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't mention that for this one, but I believe that the same <coughs> applies to the other one. So you're used to something and you know how to do it and, and you, you have the way of doing it that way. And you have some people that are more clever and say, depending on the number of web pages, it was easier to do it by scrolling or either by scrolling or swiping. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, the next. Yeah, and, and I did, this is from the discussion uh, chapter they provided. So they try to they refer to some of the quotes from the uh, participants, and, and I just took one of them as an example. They say swiping left and right was hard. It was not that smooth going back and forth was going up and down. But that's probably based on preferences uh, and what you used to. You, you could have uh, cards, horizontal too. I mean, they don't have to be... Uh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I don't. And also, of course, this is not rocket science, but if you have three or four pages available, of course, it's easy to pick the one. You don't have to swipe. Yeah. And also at this time, when it did this one, there was no accelerator. As I understand on an iPhone, but that's strange to me, by the way. But it, so, an accelerator will help you to get to right place uh, faster and at least with less uh, uh, interaction. <coughs> and um, next. Yeah, so this is their conclusion. They just said a cards interface and it is faster switching and it's less frustrating, at least if you're working in a Google environment. That was my intervention. When navigating a large number of app pages, they might be right. Uh, well, study said so. And uh, does this without significantly increasing erroneous selection. So that's the conclusion of this paper. And uh, 
go to next. So they, what they did next, of course, they tried to make a generalization out of this one. So how can this apply to the rest of the world? So what they're saying that Cox interface could provide an efficient and better interface for switching by decreasing the number of interactions and time to switch, as well as reducing your user's cognitive load. Well, that's the first statement based on what they have, what they have done. What, what I would question is, of course, if they use the representative sample and use the convenience sample and just taking people very close in their own environment, it's all Android developers. But if you go to the next one, just to relate this one back to the beginning of usability again. So usability, so time to switch is how effective uh, are they doing what they try to do? They try to switch between tabs. And how much does it take to do it? How much workload? How the number of interaction also how, how how easy is it to do it? And the satisfaction you can probably relate this to normal users' cognitive load. So if it's easy to do it, you're probably more satisfied. And with this, I will invite you to go to next. I just put up some questions so we can discuss the paper. So first one, do you believe in the result? Why, why not? And then uh, we can discuss the method used. The setup, like a slab a proper place to do multiple experiments. Like I said in the beginning, you normally uh, use and you have to design for distractions. You're not really distracted when you're in an uh, environment like a lab. <coughs> what about the findings? And also the one I said, the generalization. Can they, do, can they do the generalization based on this the sample they used to, to do the experiment? And uh, to try to relate it back to this course, what, what can we learn from this one when we're developing apps? So, any thoughts about this one? So, uh, what do you think about the results? Can we can we believe? Can we trust the result? Can we use it? Uh, why? Why not? Anyone? 